but how to create a seamless texture for architectural visualizations and rendering. Now I've got some black linen here and we'll see that there's a bit of a problem once we zoom in anyway that the color it becomes very pixelated and there's also a little bit too much color in here. So what we're going to do is desaturate this or at least take some of the saturation out and to do that we'll go first image adjustments hue and saturation and we're going to just reduce that saturation I'm after something black anyway so I don't need to go completely black and get rid of all of that color you can see if I build that up we get a lot of color so what I want is just something a lot lower than where it was already we could get rid of that all together but uh, something like that that. So just so at this scale we, we no longer see those vibrant colors would be great. Now what's the problem? It's a nice shape, it's a nice pattern and there is some great texture in there but when we offset this or more to the point if we were going to tile this, multiply this, we'd see dark and light areas. To explain that let's go filter, other, offset and we can see if we move those edges, if you have an old Nokia, if you, or if you remember old Nokias, the idea of snake, so if we keep going left, or up or down, that's going to come up the bottom, or go out the top, or come from side to side. And this just helps us in Photoshop to identify what those corners, so bottom left, top right, bottom right, top left would look like and we see that they don't work very well. We don't want to keep it like this but it's a good um, guide at the moment to see what we're aiming for. So we'll press cancel now we're going to multiply our layer. So that would be, let's not use it, so keyboard that could be command J or layer new layer by copy. Layer new layer by copy. I'll just use the pull down menus so you can see what I'm doing. Then we could do uh, control G to group these or group layers and this is just to manage it. Now we don't need to necessarily group these to make it work. Now we can also turn off this background image for now if we want. It's always good to keep a copy or to create a copy just so we don't accidentally edit and destroy our original if we make a mistake because we all make mistakes from time to time. Now let's turn off the top layer at the moment. We're going to use the bottom one and we're going to go to filter blur average and that as we can see is going to take all of the texture out so it's just going to be the color or more importantly the light and what's happening with that one. Now we're going to turn the top layer back on and we're going to choose the options here linear light And then we're going to go filter, other, high pass. And before I do that, actually, let's just change this to 50%. Opacity. Again, filter, other, high pass. Now, what we want to do here is if we have this all the way down at zero, we see that there's going to be nothing. What does that mean? It's basically just showing us what's. Uh, underneath and if we went all the way up to the top we'd see that it does nothing that it effectively looks like the original background and we've still got a massive color shift from top to bottom so what we need to do is find an average somewhere in between now if we go too low we're going to lose all of the um, all of the color discrepancies or all of the light discrepancies or the wrinkles in this case. If we go too low we're going to get texture and that's it. If we go too high again we're going to have big color shift from top to bottom. So we need to find a balance. We want to find a balance where we've got no color shift from top to bottom but ideally we're still going to maintain or retain just a few of those wrinkles. Now every texture is going to be different and we're going to have to be able to adjust this on every different texture. So in this case I'd like to keep some of the wrinkles but at the sake of having light at the top and bottom differences it's just not worth it. So I'm going to reduce this down so it's quite low. Press OK 
uh, we're not going to fiddle with this too much and then just so you can see what I'm doing press OK and now we need to group all these together we could not group those two together so we could select these two layers merge layers so it's keeping my original now we don't necessarily need this to be in a group we could delete that now and I can turn that off turn them both on so we can see the difference here now to see if this worked we're going to go filter other offset again and do the same thing snaking left to right up and down and what we can see is that there's no discernible joint there's no junction which makes it easy to tell that this is a repeatable or a tiled pattern so that's worked really well now if we zoom all the way in uh, now the great thing about this is we can leave this in the middle and that's probably best to and if we zoom all the way in we can try to identify where that overlap was now as we can see it gets very very pixelated of course any texture will pixelate if it's based on an image it's possible we've got a joint right there we can see that here I'm losing it here though so that's pretty good and if we do the same thing looking for the vertical joint can't find it so that's great now if we want to avoid any problems what we can do is use our clone tool to get rid of any areas that are making it discernibly identifiable so we could use our clone stamp tool go to alt pick up a sample I can make that a lot smaller if I wanted to alt pick up a sample and just delete those little discolorations or loose threads and now we've got a texture black linen texture that is repeatable or able to be used in something like Archicad as a texture an image texture so of course we're wanting to repeat this end to end top to bottom uh, but it will work quite well without any obvious tiling pattern because we've removed the color differentiation from top to bottom just save that and that's it now saving as a PSD or a TIFF will allow us to keep our layers which is great for usefulness but that's not going to be very good for using in something like Archicad we're going to change that back to a JPEG in this case save replace and of course I could increase or reduce there would be no point increasing it wouldn't work very well the JPEG quality I'm going to leave it like it is I'll move it up to 12 just because I can of course we could make that smaller to save file size to make that smaller but that will also reduce quality or lose quality and I don't want to do that so that's it